<clears throat> I'm telling you what, I think it's the Air Force with their jamming pods. Yeah, it could I think be. Getting ready, I think they're getting ready to bomb us. Probably. You know, as, as long as we don't hear uh, targeting information breaking through on the uh, on the on the headphones, I think we'll be okay. Remarks, smack, cat one, CDE one low, best weapon with 15 millisecond fusing. Target is command post. On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, this happens all the time, bro. Biden's VP pick, the M&P thumb safety sucks, and James Comey will never, ever go to jail. Okay, good morning, everybody. This is episode 173 of the John 1911 podcast. So uh, how's everybody doing this morning? We've had a bunch of technical issues. We've had, we've had the Air Force uh, basically, you know, do a bombing run on us, and we had to, you know, move the podcast back like 40 minutes. So, I'm just, uh, I'm just hoping that we don't, we don't get, you know, they don't come back and try to hit us a second time. So, well, you know, I, I, do we have to, do we have to wear our mask during this podcast? Is what I'm wondering. No, you do not have to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 uh, the the whole mask thing just pisses me off. Well, if you want if you want to get pissed off in Illinois, what the governor is proposing is con- contact tracing. You know what that is? Yeah, actually, we do. Yeah, um, it's unbelievable. Twelve times removed, they want it. Well, they're going to do it with an app on your phone. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do – I don't know what they're proposing in Illinois. But in Australia, Apple and Google have developed this contact tracing. And basically what it is is they, um, they put this thing on your phone. It constantly broadcasts your location, and then they use modeling and, and, and your GP and GPS to basically figure out everywhere you've been and people you've been <laughs> close to and on, you know, basically spy on you and then figure out if you've – been you know been hanging out with 30 whores now here's the interesting thing um in australia i think it was australia it was just a day or two ago a, a, a story had come out and they're like hey we've got this contact tracing app it's for the good of everybody everybody download this so we can see where you are and what you're doing so we know who has been in contact with whom so the epidemiologist can easily um easily uh you know we can combat the virus and, and they're no, like, hey, no, but nobody's downloading the app. Hey, hello, hello, <laughs> hey. I was gonna say, no, no, no one actually believed that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, no, they, well, they, they, I mean, they believed it. I mean, I, trust me. Look at it this way, like this: when the government, if the government wants to give you money, it's gonna take forever. If the government wants, uh, wants something from you, like to track your location, they'll get it done in five fucking minutes. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. But all, all you know? but all this is is a precursor to microchipping. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean I I, I don't know, know if I'm I going mean, that far, but <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I'm, yeah, you're, I I think I think you're on your own on that one, Danny. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm of the Orwellian theory. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you need, I mean you need you're to, right. You need to put 1984 down. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, dude. I mean, like a microchip's in your phone, and they're tracking. Would you remember this came out? Well, my dog's mi- microchipped. Well, yeah, it might be next, Fido. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, when it came out, like, remember when the kids all went to spring break in Florida, and they showed all the beaches full. This is when this was first breaking. Yeah, and <laughs> um, you know, like they show all the pictures, and everybody's all brothers. Oh my god! Oh my god! You know, and. The argument was the young people weren't going to get it. Old people were going to get it. Nobody cares about the old people. So the young people just went and party. But what, what freaked a lot of people out, they showed, um, they showed a heat map. And uh, it would show little red dots of people on the beach, like, like by cell phone. And they, had, they, could, they could do it with SIM card and cell phone tracking. And they showed all these dots on this beach. And then they showed the dots moving. And they would go into certain streets, and then they'd spread out. And then they showed the dots moving across the country. And, like, the dots that had left this one beach, how they had all gone to these different cities around the country. And it took people about a day to figure out. They're like, wait a minute. You know, 
I was there. Am I one of them red dots? It's like, <laughs> yes, you are. And I got news for you, baby. Uh, you would be shocked at how the ability that people have to track your phone right now. Like, as a certain NFL player found out this week. <laughs> I had yeah. heard about that guy. What a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I love his quote. I love his quote. Uh, this happens to everybody, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strange, strangely enough, it's never happened to me. Yeah, uh, well, you know what? You're not a uh, – you you mean you're not a I, – I don't know. The story, I don't know. Oh, what, for, was the, what, was the, what was the guy's name, Danny? Do you maybe remember? Like, no, like, a, no. I, I, I actually have it on my other device that might beep, and I don't want to be chastised. So that thing is this thing is as far away as you can believe, you know, because I learned I don't bring it onto this podcast no more. Jesus, Grandpa, just turn off the volume, okay? I mean, like, <laughs> well, let me let me let me let me guess. You have an iPad, and every time you pick it up, it just flashes twelve. Like like the old VCRs all the time. That's it. I don't know how to program it yet. My grandkids aren't allowed to come over. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I don't... something like that. You know, and besides, I had a really big day yesterday, so I'm just chilling. What was your what was your big day? Uh, uh... Happy birthday to me. Oh, that's oh. right. I forgot. Let's tell everybody your birthday so you can be stalked instead of us. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dollar will still get you a pop at McDonald's. Yeah, no, it won't. <laughs> You're not getting uh-huh. a soda at McDonald's for a dollar. <laughs> oh, we have the special. You- hey, speaking of uh, drinks, do you guys remember, um, Freeze, you will love this. A guy named Chris, he, uh, he's a regular on the uh, Facebook page and uh, maybe on Instagram. He's been around a long time, but uh, he sent over a – I don't want to say his last name because I don't want him to get stalked too. He sent over a story. Do you remember when I was out at the range and I had a – I couldn't – I went to get some water, and the only bottled water I could find was a can labeled Liquid Death? Do you guys yeah, remember that? I, I do uh-huh. remember that. And I, it, it looks like alcohol. Like I had to look at it like five times. Like sure, there's no goddamn alcohol in this because it looks like a crazy beer can or something. Like there's no way people didn't buy it because they didn't see it as water. And then when they did, they were probably like, "Well, I probably won't buy the can of Liquid Death or the COVID outbreak." <laughs> so, you know, I bought this, and you know, it's like just flat water. Like you can tell it's like tap water, and. um so uh, uh, Chris, he sends over a story. This company, Liquid Death, has on their social media. They must get a lot of they get a lot of hateful comments, um, criticizing their um, you know their how they how they do business. And so what they did is they took real hateful comments and then had them made into death metal songs. And it is un. You listen to this; it is unbelievable. Like it is, it is amazing. It's like. You know, it, like this, like, you know, death metal, it's, you know, like a tar and like it's fully set up. And there's like a dude singing like, who came up with this name? You're a fucking idiot. I hope you fucking die. Like, it's crazy. And I just it's, you know, you just have I'll put a link in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, profile set or in the on the comment section on the website. And I'm telling you, listen to this. It's a, it's 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 fucking amazing. You know, sp- just, like they, they hired a death metal guy. Speaking of death metal. Back in the uh, late 80s, I knew a guy that played in a band. Uh, the name of the band was Cadillacs for Jesus, in the word according <laughs> to General Motors. And what they did is they played death metal or speed metal to country western songs, which means, <laughs> which, which means each song was like 45 seconds long when you speed it up to like speed metal speeds. Because, you know, country songs aren't long anyway. It was hilarious. They were a good show to go see. Is, is this is this from back from your uh, when you used to hustle pool and bars days? Yep, it is you indeed. To, we're like a. I have this image that, like you know, in like the eighties, you're wearing like a, a a white jacket, like Don Johnson, and you're and you're selling uh, you're selling Uzis out of the uh, out of the front trunk uh, of of a of a Ferrari 
uh, you know, in the back behind the bar. Well, I, know, I'll tell you, that's, that's- I'll tell you a very similar story to that. Um, I had just come back from uh, a big gun show. Again, this was like late eighties, early nineties. And I had picked up an AT4 tube and it was in the trunk of my car. And I was in a bar talking to a guy and we were talking about it. And uh, he's like, well, let me see it. So we go out to the parking lot. I popped the trunk of the car. And right about the time I popped the trunk of the car, the guy that owned the bar walked by. He's like, Jesus fucking Christ. What the hell are you guys doing? Because all he sees is a fucking <laughs> AT4 in the back of my trunk. <laughs> and it was totally different times. I mean, I bought it. This is a, this, is this the same bar you used to go in the back door and you would hang your gun on a hook by the coat rack? Uh, yes. By chance. Yeah, it is. I, I, it somehow, I, I somehow, I didn't think that was too big of a leap. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Again, freeze, different- you, uh, freeze! You must have a checkered past. No comment. <laughs> I have no comment on his comment, <laughs> and I won't comment on the comment for the comment. So we're exactly, all- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. exactly. Cheap, cheap. Poli- Chief political correspondent wants to keep his job. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you guys know my history. I know how to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> hey, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. You run your mouth, and I'm going to send a bunch of monkeys on mini bikes yeah, to get back your grandkids and drag the kid. <laughs> oh. Ch- Chinese paratroopers. All yeah, I'm like going to say. All I'm going to say is I know people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you mean uh, we have friends in low places. That's right. Yeah. Don't we is all? that a, is that a sp- country speed metal song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with with monkeys yeah. on mini bikes. <laughs> Listen to yeah. uh, to speed metal. Uh, unbelievable! I can't wait just to get with you guys. <laughs> if, if I if I if I ever start a band, that is. Uh, um, a death metal that's also like uh, I want to do a, a death metal band that also uh, uh, quotes uh, sayings that people use that you know the religious sayings, and I'm gonna I'm gonna name my, my band's gonna be Jesus never said that, and it's just like these it's just like God Almighty give me a break. Uh, hey, my, speak- the name of my band's going to be It Happens to Everyone. <laughs> hey, no, 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 and no, 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 Mr. NFL. It happens to everyone, bro. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Danny, did you read that story? The NFL guy. So, because we kind of touched on. So, I don't understand how this works. So, maybe Danny will know this. So, here's the story. NFL guy is married. He's having an affair with a woman. They. He's in a house somewhere. His wife tracks his location somehow with Snapchat which I don't even know how that shit works. So then what she did, she showed up. She showed up with a knife and a gun, or she showed up with a gun for sure. And it was his gun from home. She caught them together. Uh, you know, a big old fight breaks out. 911's called. The police show up, and they're like, okay, we don't know what's going on here. They show up. They find a man running around a car with a gun in his hand being chased by a woman with a knife. They put them both down on the ground. And this is the this is the amazing part to me, you know, like what the fuck, everybody, you know, separate them, talk to them. What's the story? And it seems to match up. The woman showed up to catch the guy. The man took the gun from his from the woman. She showed up with his gun and he, he took it from her. She said, and I quote, I took the magazine out of it so it wouldn't fire because I just wanted to scare him. But it still had a round in the chamber and she didn't know it. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, that yeah. that's actually not an uncommon thing. You hear about people shooting themselves or accidentally shooting someone that's with them because they do the same thing. I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of people are stupid yeah. when it comes to guns. They just don't know. I, well, OK, Freeze, I'm one of those stupid people on some of the aspects. So I do have a question. Is there any automatics that cannot fire without the mag in? Yes. Yes. So a lot of so them. So maybe that's what she was thinking, even with one in the chamber. She, yeah. Um. So, yeah. There's a. a do we even? Ha- we might even have a breeder that does that. Yeah, maybe. Um. They're like uh, Ruger was. Is it? Was it Smith? Was it Smith and Wesson used to be big? On I that? think so. There was a company that you. 
there was a company that used to oh, used to be known for making magazine disconnects, and then what? Then they got away from it, and then what they started doing is on the side of their gun, they would always say, "This weapon will fire when the magazine." I is removed. have seen that writing. Like it's a big giant billboard. Yeah, and that's I think like uh, Smith and Wesson. I think is the one that that did that. The 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 gun that's most notorious. Most well known for the magazine disconnect is the uh, Browning High Power. Okay, so, but the problem with the whole magazine disconnect thing is it, you know, it it breeds bad habits because basically you violate the rules, assuming that the safety is going to save you. You know, don't be pointing shit at people if you don't yeah. not willing to shoot it. And you know that's the problem with the magazine disconnect. People, you know, people think it's safe to act dumb with a gun just because it's got a magazine disconnect. Well, it was so that was that could have been. A, yeah, I think, right. I think I think you're giving a professional football player's wife more credit than she deserves here. I don't think she knows what a magazine disconnect is. I think she just fucked up and didn't know there was a round. Oh no, she chamber. fucked. Oh yeah, she. Oh yeah, no, 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 I'm not giving her credit. She fucked up. She almost blew that man away. And you know, yeah. Um, well, well, how, okay. How do you, how do you, you ask me on the? on the Twitter thing or how she located them. I know people, let's just say some guys I know that their wife has, they, they have their ass low jacked on the phone and this wife could tell you wherever her husband goes. It even announces when he leaves, when he starts the car and when he returns home. Actually. Um, yeah. Um, that's a thing that a lot of parents have on their kids' cell phones. I know several people that have that. It'll even tell you what their battery charge is. Yes, it does. And it's time yeah. to charge your battery. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is actually, I don't know if it's a feature on your phone or an app you have to download, but I know, uh, several people that have, uh, that hooked up uh, with their, uh, children. Yes. It's an app. It's funny. You know, if, uh, if uh, if your phone does that and your wife is doing it, she says it's a feature. If your phone does that and China's doing it, they say it's a it's a uh, you know it's hack. Yeah, yeah, it's like okay. Yeah, uh, I don't have that feature on my phone. Um, so you think? <laughs> so you well, think? You know what, yeah. <laughs> Mister NFL apparently thought that too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, look. I mean, I I know my phone's listening to me. Because, you know, every time I talk about, you know, uh, purple three-pronged dildos, a uh, Facebook ad comes up for one on my laptop. So, I mean, I know this shit listens to me. But, I mean... Hey, stop buying the purple ones. I'm getting... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have a color preference, Mark? I, I like purple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and Prince. Oh, what you did know. I get into? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I mean, yeah, my, I mean, my my point is, I mean, I I know all this shit's tracked, but I don't personally download apps that's going to track my phone. I mean, um, I, and if there was any way I could keep, uh, you know, I could even secure it more, I would, <laughs> you know, but. Oh, dude, you and I have been talking about things or searching for things, you know, like it, we like we were looking at steel targets, we're looking at holsters, and then as I surf the internet, I'm getting cookied and I'm seeing ads everywhere. Yes, shit. like there's I can't remember there was something you and I were talking about, and it showed up in an ad on a website. And, 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 and look, like, yeah, and, and this was not something like oh, uh, we were talking about like McDonald's and a McDonald's ad. I don't remember what we were talking about, but it was pretty obscure for it to be popping up randomly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Something like with the t-shirt business, the like piece of equipment we wanted. Yeah, or like, you know, like, it, it was, was like, like holy shit. And, and people Marky, still yeah. think I'm crazy for putting tape over the camera lens on my laptop. No, no. You and the Pope. The Pope does it. Why, yeah, the why Tommy Pope. Feel? Well, actually... Yeah, the com. Well, that's why, because he's a commie pope. But it's good, you know, uh, good for thee, but yeah. not not for me. You know, Marky. Actually, the same thing happened when I was watching your SIG video. That next you, earlier that then later that evening, I meant, and the next day, I was getting <coughs> ads of SIGs on sale from like GunBroker dot com and other places that I've never even visited. Yeah. Yes. Really? Very real. Mm. Very real. And I've never subscribed to any of those websites. It doesn't shock me, though. 
I've yeah, I've sent you something, Danny, and I'm sure they cookie it. So actually, that reminds me. Um, Freeze, uh, Doc bought a. Uh, I saw M17. that. I saw that. I was uh, I was pretty um, uh, pretty excited uh, when I, when I saw it. It's like, yeah, all right. If the uh, if the team decides they're going to shoot on Friday, which is going to be up in the air because there's an issue, but um, I will try to see if he'll bring it. And while they're while they uh, while those guys are on the rifle range out, maybe I can take him to the pit. And That'd be yeah, him. that so because I'm 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 yeah I'm curious about that. About so that am I. So am I. Right, so. You know, I've played with them in the showroom, but I don't know. That's how, a lot different uh, than running one how, on the range, you know. though. <clears throat> yeah, I expect, and I predict. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go on record and say this. I expect that. <clears throat> excuse me. That somebody out there really smart, if the if the thumb safety isn't as good, like I mean, ergonomically on that gun as it is on the 1911, because again, the original 1911 thumb safety. Uh, I sucked, in my opinion. I don't. I I prefer them. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I totally agree. And I think somebody will come out with some kind of upgraded safety that'll turn that three twenty safety into more more ergonomic, so it's more natural to click and yeah. just throw it up. And uh, if that becomes successful, you watch the army will end up, you know, buying it as an upgrade mm-hmm. in the next decade for like it'll be the M seventeen A one or something. So, because it'll happen, it'll absolutely. And here's the thing: once, the, once that, once a modern striker gun, polymer gun, gets a safety that actually is as good as a 1911 safety, it's going to be KDR yeah. the door on that. You're going to see thumb safeties come back in on guns. Because remember, didn't we? I was, didn't we buy like an M and P 45 of the thumb safety? Yeah, we did. And that ass. that M and P 45. Um, yeah, man, yeah, I did not like it at all. Um, oh, Safety it did. Ruined that, that thing gun. sucked. Yeah, didn't it? I think it even flexed or something. Like, like yeah, it was just it, it, like, it, it was, was just, it, was, it, was, it was just a horribly designed thumb safety. It really was. But uh, but actually, that gun had an upgraded trigger. The trigger on that gun was actually pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, I, I know you liked it. I know. So I remember we were kind of uh, we were kind of um, thinking that you know that we just did ruined it. We got rid of it immediately. Like I don't think we. No, kept that it gun was before. it was in and out of the armory pretty quick, pretty quick. Um, I yeah. I let's see. I so. I took him to the range. I think one time, and that was it. It was like we're done. <laughs> <laughs> did not yeah, it's, it no and i mean it's a shame too because it re- they really could have done something a lot better and and you know what that's been quite a few years ago maybe they do have something better now yeah i know they've uh i know the um oddly enough doc has one uh they've upgraded the m and p to the 2.0 and i know that the guys and gals that are into the M and P guns really, they're like super hot on that, yeah. on that 2.0. Like if you get the 2.0 okay. is the gun to have. Um, I think, I think it's got a better trigger from the factory. I think, I think it might even be more accurate. Cause I remember the M and P's had some issues with accuracy. Um, so, yeah. you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, we'll, we'll, we'll see how, we'll see how. Hey, Marky, is, so, so, speaking so, about Danny, accuracy, are you still playing around with that, uh, High end uh, nine millimeter they sent you, or did you have to send it back? Uh, I'm still playing around with it, and um, it's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, the only reason I'm not carrying that gun right now is I don't have a holster for it yet. Um, I, uh, I and the reason I don't have a holster is because of the red dot. Like, and you know, I could cut into. I've got the keeper's horse holster, and I may have to. I may have to cut into the holster to, to get that, you know, but I'm going to end up tearing. I mean, I'm going to, if I cut into a holster trying to, you know, with a Dremel trying to make it, make it so it clears the red dot, I yeah. can probably destroy the holster. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've already broken two of these keepers holsters already. I mean, keepers concealment already. <laughs> just to hate. I mean, you can just tell they don't get, they, they, they're tired. They hate, they don't, yeah. they don't much care for me because <clears throat> I'm embarrassing them. I keep breaking their stuff. 
And um, and then if I turn around and I break this one, well, what? And because I because I because I dremeled it now, they're gonna it's gonna look like I'm trying to break. Well, what I wanted to ask is when you were, you know, shooting with that red dot and then trying your 17 round in the H and K, was it a big transition going back from one site to the other? It's still a transition going to the red dot from the irons because irons are so natural. I just go right to them. But fortunately, <clears throat> the way I was trained years ago to present irons is actually working very well with, um, with, the, with the red dot. Because the thing with the red dot, what you want to do is you want to start to pick it up before you throw the gun off, before the gun gets to full extension, whatever your definition of full extension is, whether it's weaver or whatever. Um, that way I can kind of, you don't want to throw the gun up and then it's the, the dot is not there. And then you're trying to find it. I mean, there's, there's some tricks I'm figuring out how to figure out where it's at. Like you just look at your iron sights. Um, so, so you kind of can maintain a little bit focus, but you get to a point where I've noticed for me is, when I'm throwing the iron sight up, the iron sight or gun up, I'm always looking through the sights, the top of the gun. The real difference, the only difference is with the red dot is I'm kind of offsetting and looking just, you know, I don't know, less than an inch above the gun because that's where the red dot's going to be in the window. And that's, I'm, I, I will say this, when, when I'm running the red dot and, it, and I've got it, and I'm like real, I'm warmed up and I'm figuring this out. It is, it is faster than irons. It's significantly faster for me. Like it's obvious. It's like, I mean, I don't even need a timer. It's mm. like, holy fuck. Mm. This is legit. Nice. Actually, did you it's like legit. the text they sent you about pulling your plate rack back up? But someone that noticed it. Pulling the plate right after you shoot up. your six plates down and the rope, but I said you're killing the job. <laughs> oh, 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 it's a you, it's right, it's a union because we're not a union yeah, shop, yeah, you don't have a union it, got to pull yeah, the rope. It's not a government job, and you know who noticed that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> And you know what I'm because you know because you used to be a politician, of course you would notice that, right? Yeah, yeah, See? yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're killing the job. Come on. <laughs> so now wait, now wait, now wait a minute. Hold on. Now, I wonder, like, relative to a uh, Pete Booty Booty because he only got so many votes. How many votes did you get? What was the most number of votes you ever got in an election? Sure. Can I ask that? Is yeah. that allowed? Seventeen. <laughs> I live in a small town. <laughs> what did you want? <laughs> class president? No. <laughs> Dog catcher. <laughs> Stop. Dog catcher. Do you know what? In, in, you know, in a city that gets 17 votes to be on city council, do you know? Do you know how they call a uh, Dog catcher, they're like, "Hey, freeze! Get your dog, tie your goddamn dog up, get him out yeah. of my yard." This dog catcher's job. Ugh. No, it was quite a few more than that, but I'll just leave that private. <laughs> I'll tell you off pod someday. So I gotta tell everybody, uh, Danny's doing a really good job because we're talking about. We just had jets flying over, and like that was real, by the way. Um, jets flying over, and we're talking about the MP, and we're talking about this, and talking about that, and Danny has been jumping up and down. For days, ready to do a podcast because he wants to. He wants to talk about Little Kim. <laughs> he wants to talk about. Um, he wants to talk about the coup in Venezuela. He wants to talk about uh, Joe Biden not making it to uh, New- November <clears throat> and, and his vice flight. president pick. <laughs> and, oh, okay, I, I got to <laughs> hear that one. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> actually, here's what I'm. Here's what the chief political correspondent is thinking I am leaning towards Kamala Harris is who he's going to pick. I really think that I, I think that Elizabeth Warren is still too much baggage, even for Biden. That's, that's my pick there. I, you know, you guys are, uh, of course, everyone is going to disagree or agree with me, but I think he is going to take her. I really do. What's your opinion on that? Uh, well, I mean, I, or- I, I think uh, Go ahead, Harris, um, 
uh, is probably a, a, a good pick. Um, because if you if you take Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren and put them together, that is such a toxic brew of sludge. I mean, first off, exactly. first off, I don't. If Biden can pick uh, Marky's uh, uh, bicycle riding monkeys. He's not going to win. I mean, it's just not going to happen. I just don't see it. But I, uh, I think, I think if he picked Warren, that would just be so freaking toxic. I mean, it would just almost guarantee that he's going to lose. With Harris, at least he stands so, a chance, I think. Well, so you have to answer our you have to answer this question. Will the average American voter think that, hey, Biden is one step away from the banana peel in the six foot hole, who he picks will be the president? Do you think the average voter thinks of that long term? Banana, banana peel and six foot hole. That's a great visual, <laughs> by the way. Go on. I'm listening. Well, so do you think the average voter will think that if anything happens to him, his vice president pick is going to step up and be running the country? Not only that, the vice president could finish out the term and then run for their own two terms after that. Does the average voter think that far <clears throat> down the line? Um, no, I, I, look, some people will, of course, but look, the average voter in this country and, and, and I don't mean this horribly, but man, the average voter in this company is stupid. I mean, you know, first off country. Yeah. Company, no, I, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> <wrong> <laughs> No, I mean, look. No, I'm they not drinking really. again, are we? Um, okay, <laughs> but look, I mean, the average American is horrible when it comes to voting. I mean, what if you have a a really good big election, you might get a thirty five percent voter turnout. That's abysmal, you know. And right, I mean, it's just the when I say the average voter, I'm talking about everyone that's eligible to vote in this country. And two thirds of them don't show up to the party, you know? So, man, I just, I don't give the, the average voting American a whole lot of uh, confidence to really be thinking that far ahead on stuff. I mean, some people will, of course, but, right. But I mean, you know, well, well, let me, let me go ahead and give you my thoughts. So here's, here's the, here's, the Democrats are obviously in a, in, a, in a wreck, and Kamala Harris was the future. A lot of people don't want to admit this now because they want to rewrite history, but Kamala Harris was the chosen one. Kamala Harris was everybody. It's, like it's gonna. She's attractive. She comes from a major Democratic state. She's a, an attorney. She was a prosecutor, law and order, and you know, this is going to be awesome. She can raise money. She's got commercial appeal. A woman. Like, like it's a slam she's, dunk. She's, she's not that been, shit crazy either. Well, and then she got, it turns out she's yeah. terrible at running for president. She can't answer <laughs> questions off, off the cuff, which for mm -hmm. an attorney seems odd. And, um, and she got like totally fucking got guillotined by uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard over the whole pot thing. So she's so damaged that you know, it's like people are like they they should. She's a safe choice. They should take her. It would help. It would help Biden in South Carolina, maybe. But a lot of blacks don't like her because of all this hypocrisy associated with her. So, you know, it's it's a tough. It, she kind of damaged herself. Um, you know, like there's people like there's they were trying to float Stacey Abrams there for a hot minute. It's just like that woman is is she. So it's just terrible. Stacey Abrams, the woman that ran for governor of Georgia, and then basically she lost by seventy-five thousand votes, and she's been going around claiming she's the she's the uh, government in exile, the governor in exile of Georgia, and she well, really won. And like they she, stole it from she's her. Crazy. And it's she like, a, well, she had an endorsement from the American Orthodox crazy. Society. Yeah, I mean she she's crazy. Yeah, she's crazy. So I yes, mean, she is. Biden. Biden. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, here, here's, 
here is the wild card of this conversation. And uh, the Tara Reid story, the woman who uh, Joe Biden supposedly porked in the Rayburn office oh. building. Um, I always like to say the word. Oh, stinky! No, and, um, stinky, stinky Joe. Like <laughs> so yeah, so stinky. Oh my god, so stinky, <laughs> pinky Joe. But um, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. That woman story. I just look. I'm I'm not voting for Biden. I'm not a Democrat. But that story, that woman has got so many holes in it, has such problems. It sucks. It stinks to high heaven. Her story has changed. Sure, you know, she and I told you this when we were talking off pod. You know, yeah, you know, she told her mom. Well, you know what? There's people out there that told their mom they won the Medal of Honor 30 years ago that they didn't fucking do it. So that doesn't mean it, it, any of it happened. And none of this has come up before now. But check this out. They've done some background on her. And they have figured out she's a Bernie bro. She's a Bernie bro. And she was even saying, bragging about it's time to take Joe Biden down, TikTok. They've got her. And, you know, so if if Biden is not going to be able to secure the Bernie bro wing of the party, which is really Warren and Biden or Warren and, uh, and Sanders. Then he's like, well, why even then he's, you know, someone like Kamala Harris looks better. Yeah. OK. You know, but maybe, what about maybe. the hypocrisy? of the me too movement the believe every woman i mean replay any of the kavanaugh hearing tapes and, and, and <coughs> it's total yeah, they, bullshit yeah you're right because here's the thing i mean look there is proof that joe biden and tara reed knew each other they've met she worked <clears> for him it is in it's not in dispute they really can't even prove that this uh that the Kavanaugh woman, uh, uh, Blazy Ford, whatever her first name was, actually knew Kavanaugh. She, they're thinking, and like I remember, a guy had anonymously, anonymously come out and had had basically said, you know, I think she's talking about me. I don't want to reveal my identity, but this is what happened. I was drunk. I was young, and like she has the wrong person. Like her, her truth may be true, but. They don't. They can't even actually prove that these two people yeah. even cross paths. Biden has met this woman, and <laughs> she has even said in the past that yeah. Biden made her uncomfortable. Uh, Biden, you know, the, you know, she said that at one point she said Joe Biden they fired her because she wouldn't serve drinks at some kind of function. Her story has changed so many times. Like they, like there was, it went from sniff your hair joe biden to you know pork and people and it's like this is this sucks and so but the democrats yeah. have always done this dude like like monica monica Lewinsky. <clears throat> i mean like okay let's not forget a few things monica Lewinsky never came forward Linda to Tripp. rat out bill clinton monica well, that's right monica Lewinsky was not going to flip on bill but what happened was she was talking to her friend, Linda Tripp, who worked at the Department of Defense, and uh, it got out, and the Clintons had decided they were going to portray Monica Lewinsky as a nut job. And literally, they were going to put that girl into an insane asylum. They literally... They were going to destroy this girl. Like I love how history is rewritten on this. Like all of um, all of these uh, uh, the National Organization of Women, all these women rights movements, they all basically went fucking dark on Monica Lewinsky. You know, and and they were and like the Clintons were going to put the woman in jail basically. And the only thing that saved her, the only thing, and everyone likes to read like it was not set in stone. That Monica Lewinsky happened. He said, she said, he's the president. She's very young. You know, nobody gave a flying. He's like, come on, come on, come on. And then she popped yeah, up with the, the guy DNA. Dress. And everybody's like, and it was boom. And she saved the dress, that, which in itself. Yeah, well, is, see, that's a thing. Odd. I mean, you know, when you were saying she was never going to flip on Bill, I mean, that may very well be the case. But she did save the uh, spooge stained dress, and that in itself, <laughs> that in itself tells me that um, uh, she knew about uh, the Clintons whacking people, and she wanted evidence. 
yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I, I, I swear I, mean, I didn't shoot myself the in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah, twice. I mean, seriously. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not going to subscribe to conspiracy theories. But there is zero. I mean, like this. And everyone talks about the Clintons, and they talk about Hillary, and like Hillary's a psychopath. I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not being unkind to Hillary Clinton. Everybody that knows her and sees her and works with her, they all say it. Colin Powell basically said it in not so many words, like in an email. She's her craven desire for just power. Mm-hmm. She's there's something wrong with her. But it was it is undeniable the Clintons were going to put Monica Lewinsky into some kind of community control, aka jail. And it's amazing how nobody fucking talks about that because that's literally not very different than Michael Flynn at this point. Like they were going to run the train (laughs) on that girl. And I do not – pun not intended. They were going to fucking destroy her. Like like take away her rights, have her arrested, probably have her doped up, put in a – Put in a straitjacket in well, the rubber room. Okay. Well, speaking speaking and about uh, the dress. Yeah, speaking about yeah, Flynn, the dress saved her. What do you think of all of these new anti Comey allegations and DOJ misdoings coming out? I think uh, I think uh, James Comey is going to enjoy his retirement. You don't think that Barr is going to go after him in some way? Oh man, the, the... Hey, look, Barr can do uh, uh, Bar, Bar can do whatever he wants. Bar can do whatever he wants, and Bar doesn't give a fuck. Can't control Bar, but that's not the problem. Bar isn't the judge. Bar isn't the jury. Bar isn't Washington D.C. Do you think the people when the with I don't care if they bring people up on charge. Do you think? Do you think they're? Do you think? Do you honestly think? Let's say let's say they charge Comey with like high crimes. Like what? Like oh my god! This is the day. This is like a John Hannity. This is we finally we got it. You think there's going? You think Comey's going to a fucking trial? Really? Like every fucking court case in America, most court cases are settled. There, you know, you take a plea deal. No way, no way. Comey's going into a nasty trial with national security secrets, FISA court operations, capabilities, the fucking media. There is no way, no way, no fucking way. It'll it, it, the worst. The worst that would happen is, okay, um, uh, we uh, took a plea deal for level seven freaking misdemeanor, and I can't have paper clips from the government for free anymore. Nobody's going to jail. Uh, here. Don't don't, don't fight him on this, Danny, because I went round and around and around <laughs> a no, long time no, ago I, on I, this I, with him. <laughs> he has a well. Mark, Jay, he has a point, but just yeah, hear me I, out. Comey can also flip to, you know, get other people more on the hook too to implicate them. Comey's not going to flip on anybody because Comey, uh, the people. Okay, look, it, look, you got to understand something. You live in basically Illinois, Chicago, okay? All right, and you understand, you know, organized crime, and you understand corruption. And you understand the system. James Comey is not going to be tried in a court of, even if he is charged for like major charges. Anybody's charged. These people are not going to be tried in, um, you know, in like I don't know Dayton, Ohio. They're going to be. They're going to be in the. Uh, they're going to be in the circuit court in. Uh, in but Virginia. being federal charges, they could move it to Mississippi if they wanted. They won't. Why would they? Why would Washington, why would the apparatus of that entire city move this out of an area where they can't control it? You just they answered your own, like, you just answered your own question lawyers. where they can't control it. Exactly. They won't. Uh, this, th- this idea that these people are going to go to jail, the only way you get satisfaction in any of this, the only way is administratively and uh, electorally. If Donald Trump, the only thing that's happened in this entire endeavor that has been any sort of of justice was Donald Trump, the one guy who worked at the FBI, firing him at the last minute so he couldn't get his pension. 
That is the only example um, that of anybody uh, facing justice for this crazy behavior. And that is going to be your guidepost going forward. I mean, if Donald Trump decides I'm shutting down the FBI, we're no longer going to have the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We're going to have the U.S. Department of Investigation, the USDI. They're done. I mean, he can, you know, and again, politically, he probably couldn't even get away with that. Donald, the only way you're going to get justice here is if Donald Trump starts hammering people administratively. You will never get criminal. Uh, look, I'm not saying that they won't get some patsy dude, low level guy to, I mean, I mean, you know, like somebody that, you know, all oh, turns out he took an iPhone home from the Justice Department. And so he's guilty of stealing government property and he can, you know, plead out to some misdemeanor. But I'm not saying that won't happen, but you're dreaming. You're dreaming. You want justice? You want revenge? It's vote for Donald Trump and hope he That's fucking the thing. goes fucking It's not going to be justice. The second term. It's not going to be court. I think it's more of a, of a self-satisfaction for Trump. Well, okay. Like, think about this one. Like, let's just talk about Carter Page, uh, General Flynn, Comey, and actually the uh, – who's the woman who was the uh, acting attorney general? Uh, the woman with the oh, short the hair. Oh, the Georgia one that fired. She I, stepped I down, her. fired, slash fired, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's, she's in trouble on this. But here's the thing. Um, okay, bring them up on charges. What court – okay, what court are these people supposed to be prosecuted in? Does the FISA court – have a functioning criminal docket. I mean, they're going to have to create new venues. Where is the? Where are these people supposed to quote go to jail from? Because this sounds like to me this is going to be the jurisdiction of FISA court. Does anybody? Does the is the FISA court ever actually had a criminal prosecution? I do not think so. I believe it is an administrative court that's overseen by the justice or by, by the Supreme Court. And it's like – and they rotate the guys in or gals, and it's like there is no mechanism, and there's – where's the venue standing where people are supposed to be prosecuted for these crimes? That's, that's a good point. I mean I, I, until, you, until, until you see changes in the FISA court, until you see – now maybe Barr is going to you – know, who knows? Barr could be like a true believer. Maybe Barr's like, I have to save the country. I have to fucking get these guys. And if that's true, he they will they will he they will put his he can win he could be president well, in 2024. If that's true. But right now the battle is the battle is is what happened under the Obama administration into the Trump administration. Is it is it worse than Watergate? Because it obviously is, but nobody but politically and uh, uh, narratively in the news, it's not. Well, speaking Nobody about getting that. somebody, that's why little little Kim re reemerged. I think. Well, I told you. He's all, the right, kind of guy all right, all right. You were right. To... It's killing me to say it. It's <laughs> killing me to say it. But you were a hundred. You were a hundred percent correct. And I'm choking on. I'm choking Chief on my words. <laughs> Chief political correspondent, Chief political correspondent Danny has confirmed. Yes, you were, right. you were, correct. you were right. Uh, <sighs> but you know how he crawled off a deathbed after having, you know, the most major coronary surgery there is is beyond me. But he did it. Look, he didn't fake his own death to uh, to to figure out who you know. He didn't do that. He um. We had guys from South Korea contacting us. They listen to this podcast. Um, I think these guys a soldier over there, and uh, you know who you are. I don't want to say your name because I don't want you to get in trouble with your command. But I even asked him. I said, "What does everybody over there in um, in Korea think?" And uh, he's like, "They all think he's hiding." Mm, that's interesting. Right? Or you know, he and it? it's like <laughs> you know, and it. Well, he the, the, little Kim is so he is so ill. Like he's got major health issues. He's morbidly obese. Um, like there's even been analysts. You'll notice if you ever um, watch a video of him, if he spends a, ma- a certain amount of time of sitting and talking, he um, he'll take his left arm and he'll turn his wrist and he'll push down on his wrist. It's almost like he has like maybe cerebral palsy or so. There's something up there because he, he, has, he has this weird arm movement. 
and P- analysts have been looking at it for years, trying mm. to figure out if there's if mm. there's issues there. So, well, he went he went underground yeah. for a while. Uh, why, you know, I'd like to know, but I guess we never will. Not coming out of that country. Yeah. And we yeah. have so well. Well, guys, we've been we've been going kind of long here, and uh, I'm actually going to probably lose you in a minute. I'm going to have to get some new microphones. So, oh, unless there's anything else we need well, to talk about, what do you got about, on the police uh, water? The, uh, the 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 <laughs> the, spo- the, spo- the spooge dress, the police blotter. Um, I mean, well, I like the, my favorite one is the woman who uh, she was arrested in. Uh, I think it was Georgia. Like Georgia's really getting it today. Um, she was she went and she was licking her hands. And then she was rubbing and touching everything in some kind of store, and um, they arrested her. And um, she's looking at 20 years for tampering with food. And see, a lot of people are looking at that, like, who are young. Yeah, you like, can. you can't get 20 years for tampering with food. But see, all three of us, we re- yeah. we remember right. the Tylenol deaths. Yeah. And they never solved that. They never solved those. And uh, to this day, that is an unsolved crime. Yeah. They do not know who what, was What would that be, domestic terrorism? Tylenol, so. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. Well, that wraps up episode 173 of the John 1911 podcast. If you want to see stories, pictures, or links of anything we discussed, you can go to our website at john1911.com. That's J O H N 1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun, everybody. Bye bye. See you later.